Hi all, this is the video that, go, that I'm going to show, demonstrate how to use the coding analysis procedures in the QDA Minor Light program. So QDA Minor Light is not a fancy pants uh, bit of software. As you can see, when you have uploaded your documents, these were PDF documents uploaded into the program, uh, it is converted into something closer to a text file. But as you can see, we do have all of our information here, even if it's not pretty. You can adjust the formatting. There are formatting functions up the top here, but I'm not going to waste your time today showing you how to edit a document. That's something that you should all be familiar with what to, how to do. So here I'm going to show you how to code. There are two different ways of coding. And one relies on you have knowing what you're looking for, whereas the other is simply going through documents and tagging ideas as they arise from the documents themselves. Because we're at the stage in the project where the second type of coding is much more relevant because we don't know what we're looking for at this stage, I'm going to focus on the second type of coding, which requires you to read and code what you have read. So in terms of this kind of analysis process, there is this idea of a unit of analysis. Are you going to focus on particular words, small groups of words, whole sentences, or whole paragraphs, or whole journal papers, or whole documents themselves? So you can make those decisions. It just depends on what you think is best and what you think is most effective in terms of collating the data. I tend to focus on sentence level or paragraph level if I think the paragraph is all referring to the same thing. So first off, I'm going to read and I'm in order to save time, I know that this first paragraph here Believe me, it's one paragraph. The, uh, the editing or the import has changed what it looks like. This all refers to the same idea of human brands. So in order to code this, I then go up to the top here where it says codes and select it and say add. So I'm going to call this code name human brands and I'm going to put it under a category heading of what I'm going to call celebrity. And I can change the color if I'd like, but at this stage red is fine because I have no other codes. So the reason I've used celebrity as what we call the parent code or the parent category is because in my research I tend to focus on the phenomenon of celebrity, so big concept celebrity, and human brands tends to be one way of understanding celebrity. So it's become what we call the child code. And if I think that this code is going to come up often, I can create myself a shortcut. So I could call this shortcut control shift H. And every time I come across this code, all I have to do is select or control shift H and whatever I've selected will be coded to this uh, section, to this code name. So I select hey, uh, add, and you'll see over to this left-hand side where it says codes, we now have a parent category of celebrity and a child code of human brands. So here we have the next paragraph with a bit, it's a bit messy, but we'll get there in the end. So this one, celebrity combined human brands and identity definitions support examining celebrity sponsorship and social media advertising serve as a context for marketing communication to examine how different stakeholders, da, 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 blah, 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 gather together an assemblage of services and co-creating human brand identities. All right, so this has a lot of information in here, but I want to, add a code 
that is a subcode of this one because this one in particular is looking at human brand identities, not just human brands in, in general. So I go up to my codes and I say add and I'm going to call this human brand identity and I'm going to place it under celebrity still and I'm going to make it green. And I'm not going to provide a shortcut this time because I think it's too specific. So I say add and close. So I go on and through this paper, so in this, and I can select other sections here where we're talking about celebrity brand identity. Again, I, if you look at the bottom here, co-creation influences human brand identity. So I'm going to code this code as human brand identity. It's the last one, so it gives, it, gives me the option of just selecting it from right clicking. And I'm going to also add a new code that is co-creation because that has come up a couple of different times but I'm going to put it under what a pairing called stakeholder and I'm going to make it navy and say add. So as you code, if you see on the right hand side here, it shows you colors and what you have coded particular things as. So it just makes it easier to see what you haven't haven't coded. So I can do this on multiple different documents. So if I go to this document, oop, this document, and I look at this paragraph here, this paragraph is referring to identities in general. So I can select this paragraph, code, add. So I might have a code name of identity and under the under a heading under the parent of consumer and I'm going to make this teal and I say add. Again you see it over to the left hand side the codes have been added. So if I wanted to code this paragraph add an existing code so I, I am assuming that this paragraph is about stakeholder co-creation. I'm making it up I haven't read this paragraph but I need to save time so I go up to this drop down menu that says code I select it, I select co-creation and I hit N and I select the little whatever that thing is supposed to be, pen I guess, onto the side and you'll see over on this side you see it is now coded at co-creation. So say I want to now I've finished coding up all of my documents in this case it's been only two but this is for demonstration purposes. And I wanted to look at what I've found in terms of the codes and, and what each code tells me compared to each other. So to do this, I can go up to retrieve and I can do a coding retrieval. So I leave this as is and I can go to the codes that I'm interested in. In this case, I'm interested in looking at human brand identity versus identity in general. And I say search and I get this table which I will expand to make it easier to see all the different things that have come up. So I see that I've got two things coded at human brand identity and two things coded at identity both related to the two different papers that I have coded. If I want to see these codes, the full co context of these codes, I go to this little icon here that I think is supposed to be a document and I select it and I can see the full spot in which I have coded this as human brand identity.
So within this code, it talks about human brand identity. This one talks about human brand identity versus these ones here, which talk about identity in general. So I can start to compare within codes and across codes what exactly is meant by these concepts. So we start to build up a much more nuanced and, and a greater understanding of what it is we're actually looking at, which provides a, a much easier way of comparing ideas across documents. So that is the coding process. If you are relying on the codes to come from the text itself. I tend to use words that are used in the text. So I would, if you look at this one here, I might also code this one here as brand image, brand differentiation, possibly brand equity. So all of these are concepts that we use in marketing theory. They have specific meanings. And when they appear, it might be a good idea. It would be a good idea to code them because this suggests that when talking about human brands or celebrity, we could also be talking about these other concepts as well. So we build up a much more um, detailed conceptual framework to work from. However, if you do know what you are looking for particular specifically, you can create a coding map here. You can add codes into this left hand side before you start reading documents. So as you read documents and you see a code that you are looking for, you apply that code to the document. And again, you can do this kind of analysis at the end. So this is the initial coding process. It, it is a matter of reading and labeling, but it does provide a useful tool to find out exactly what is going on in the, um, the literature and in your secondary sources. In the next video, I'm going to talk about how you can apply some of these codes into doing further analysis.